All right, so we're now here ready for another Social Marketing Hour podcast. I got a very, very, very special podcast for you today, and you're gonna understand more as to why this is so special. If uh, you have seen me in the world of social media, you've been tuning into my podcast, if you watch my content across all these platforms, you know how much I talk about creating content unicorns, about creating a message, about impacting the world, about getting your message heard by millions of people. I got the perfect guest to talk about that subject today. This is something that I haven't talked about enough. The subject of executing that whole strategy of message to millions, of like impacting people, building a brand with your legacy, with your content, it's something that we haven't talked about enough. And you know that is the thing that I'm the most passionate about. So I'm excited about this because I got today on the podcast Ted McGrath. Ted McGrath is a legend in this particular area. He's a public speaker. He's been speaking to tens of thousands of people over the year. He's been seen by millions of people across the social media world and across stages in the on the planet. And and he he has one of one of his brand is called you're not gonna believe this <laughs> message to message millions. To millions. Message to millions and. He is very special in this particular area. We're gonna be doing some things together. We're working on some collaborations because I believe that he has this area that will complement really well what I'm trying to do with a lot of you to get you started, to get you going, to get you inspired and motivated to just hit record. So Ted McGrath, welcome to the Social Marketing Hour podcast. We're excited to have you here today, brother. It's great to be here, man. I'm excited to be here. So let's jump right into it. If you wanna yeah. give me a quick little story about how did you get started with this particular journey? How did you decide, you know what? I, I wanna impact the lives of people. I wanna show them how to be speakers. I wanna show them how to impact the world. All right, so I'll give you the, the two minute story. So when I was 21, I started in the life insurance business. I did not have a better plan. Uh, my boss at the time was like, hey, you know, you, you can go out and crack six figures in income. And I was kind of young enough, dumb enough, green enough to believe him. Put my head down. I chased after the six figures. And, you know, at the end of the year, I cracked six figures in income. That night at 4 a.m., I was on the kitchen floor, overdosed from a bag of cocaine, two pills of ecstasy, 15 vodka sodas. Hmm. And I was revived. And the next morning I wake up and I'm like, well, money didn't do it. So like there has to be something deeper or more important in life, right? And so at that time I thought it's power and status. So I'll chase the power and status. So I went and you know, my, I got promoted to management and um, I became a partner at a young age with the company. And by the time I was 28, I was the number five partner out of 500 partners in that company. Wow. And when I got the news to become one of the top partners, I had that question maybe like a lot of people have right now, is this really all there is to my life? And, uh, and I resigned and I'm like, okay, I'll become an entrepreneur. Like that'll be the answer. And I kind of set out, started up a couple different businesses. Um, wasn't really passionate about them, you know, uh, and then just, you know, blew through all my money. I was still partying, still drinking at the time, uh, house in foreclosure, cars towed out of the driveway, uh, you know, sitting on my couch. I got my face in my hands. I'm like, what the hell do I really want to do with my life? And that was the moment that I realized, you know, through, that business experience, I was great at sales and new marketing, right? I'd been speaking and presenting from the time I was 22 doing seminars. So I should get get out and start teaching people the skills that I know. And so I started. I love it. Yeah. And you haven't stopped since. Haven't stopped since, man. You yeah. know, and I started by doing seminars. That's initially how I did it because that was my passion. Because when I was in the financial world, I started leading seminars. But I wanted to do it on something that I was passionate about. Amazing. Yeah. So you know what the name of this company is, right? Uh, no, our company, my company. AM, AM. That's close. AGM. AGM. You know what the A stands for? Uh, no. Attention. Attention grabbing media. Correct. You Go got on. it. You got remember, it. okay? Yeah. So it's an obsession of mine yeah. that I've had ever since I was a little kid. Yeah. Right? Just getting attention. I remember uh, used to play tennis when I was a young kid. Yeah. And my highlight was having my parents and my grandparents and people come and watch me play. Yeah. I was what? a tennis player. You were a tennis player too? Yeah. We got to play yeah. it for sure. I played for in sure. college. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're gonna kick my butt. We yeah. should probably have I haven't have played, bro, in like 12, 13 years. So really? No, so I play, I'm playing a lot. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Do you know what your number would be? I'm, I will be a good four or five right now. I, I literally have not played since Hawaii probably 13 years ago. So, I might just yeah. kick your butt. You might just kick my butt. We're gonna try it. You know, We're gonna try we'll it one a day. shot, bro. We gotta give it a yeah. shot. So anyways, uh, that was my, an obsession that I had, like getting attention, right? Yeah. Getting attention. I didn't really quite understand 
the power of getting attention. Right. Yeah. Now I do. Yeah. So much so that the company is all about how do we help people and brands and myself get attention. Great. Because it opens up the door to revenue, expansion, growth, and yeah. all these other things. So that's my obsession now. Yeah. How did you yourself go about it? Were you an introvert? Were you an extrovert? Were you somebody that really wanted to get on stages and just talk to people? I know that there's a lot of people that I have help with that I help. Like for example, we talked about Dr. Eric Berg. Yeah. Dr. Eric Berg is not a guy looking for attention. Right. Believe it or yeah. not. He's an introverted. He's an introvert. He yeah. actually had to do fear of public speaking courses before oh, wow. he actually yeah. got going. Yeah. He knew he had value. Yeah. But he didn't really want to be a speaker. Yeah. He didn't really quite understand that until later on. How about you? In your case, extrovert, introvert, tell me about that. A little bit of both, you know, it depends where you get me, right? But uh Speaking like somebody just asked me at 22, hey, does, we're going to do a seminar. Somebody want to do it? I'm like, sure. I think I'm just like, a, I, I want to jump in and try new things type of person, you know? And so I started doing it at a young age. I was petrified, of course. Like if you don't have the skill set, I remember my first talk ever. I'm just pacing back and forth. I couldn't even look at the audience, you know? My third talk ever, I got up on stage. I had the whole thing memorized word for word. At the time, I was still drinking. It's a Monday morning. I get up, I speak to like 10 accountants, and I forget my lines. And like two minutes into the talk, I'd like just sweat start pouring down my forehead to where the point of like I took off my black blazer, I had this light blue shirt on, sweat dripping everywhere all over my shirt. And I did the best thing you could ever do if you get in that situation. I literally walked and sat down in the front row with the audience. Wow. So if you could imagine I'm sitting with the audience, we're watching nobody on the freaking stage. I'm embarrassed as can Stage be. is empty. Stage is empty. Nobody there. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to get back up. And I get back up and I finish the talk. And it was like, I'm never, ever going to speak again. So I, I always liked the attention, right? Because I played athletics. I always wanted the ball. I always liked to be like tennis. You're right there, center of attention. I always wanted the ball, you know? And so then, of course, I got back on my horse a couple months later and did a successful seminar. But like, I think I was pe petrified doing it, you know? Right. Petrified. So uh, that's a great story. So in your case, for example, being more of an extrovert naturally, yeah. you're a social guy, you like, you know, you're comfortable talking to people, engaging, circling on a party, whatever that may be. Have you ever seen, because you specialize, you help people yeah. get their message in front of more people. Have you ever seen somebody change from an introvert to an extrovert? Or do you feel that that's, you know, it's just the way it's gonna be? I think, I think you can, you know? I think like I've watched, the evolution of like certain clients who who like were afraid to speak and then you get them up there and all of a sudden you realize they're great speakers, you know? So, and they would probably say that they're introverts in their life. They're not that social. They don't go up and talk to people all the time, but you get them on a stage and man, there's expression coming out like crazy. So I just think it depends what setting somebody's in, you know? I'm actually like, I love being in front of an audience at this point. It's kind of, I just love it. But I also do a one man play. So I'm a performer. So I play different characters on stage as well. So that was something I wanted to try as I was speaking and I knew there was something more and I knew naturally I was a performer. So I wanted to actually try out performances. And I, I realized like 10 years ago, I was like, wow, I'm a performer. I'm going to start doing a play. And that's what I started to do. Makes sense. I mean, uh, for, for those that don't know you, your girlfriend is a superstar. She's a celebrity. Amazing. She's yeah. amazing. amazing. She's somebody that I admire a lot. Marisol Nichols. Yeah. You know, you know, sometimes uh, the, the attraction of like powerhouses and stars, right? Absolutely. She is, um, uh, obviously she has the Rib uh, Riverdale show. Riverdale. Riverdale. Yeah, yep, but the yep. thing that I admire about her, yeah. even though I've loved her, I, I actually started, um, first time that I got introduced to Marisol yeah. was in my favorite all time show, which was 24. Yeah, 24, yeah. When she, she showed up in that show and she did a great job, just like, I think she ended up being a bad guy. Spoiler alert. Right, yeah. I think yeah, so, right? Yeah. So um, that's when I was like, oh, wow, look at this girl. She's a great actress. And, She's amazing. And then she kept on showing up and showing up. But the main thing about Marisol that is so unique, and I'm going to have her on the podcast soon, yep. is the um, her humanitarian efforts, man. What she does with- For like, human trafficking. Human trafficking yeah. is, is yeah. incredible. We'll talk about that. It's just a little sneak peek about our podcast, because yeah, we will and, talk about and that. And Sony bought her life rights for, uh, for like a movie. Really, yeah. for what she's doing, because yeah. she's, it's crazy now how yeah. she infiltrates and she goes undercover. 100%. Because she's a, she's a short little girl, right? She's, she's like 5'3". She's a short girl, so she makes it like, like obviously she's an actress, yeah. she's a pro at it. She's a pro. So she goes and she pretends that she's a, a little girl. Yeah. Crazy stuff, anyways, yeah, wow. insane stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Really, really, Previews really Previews cool of what's stuff. to come. 
that's right preview yeah. um so kind of lost that uh the track with you but just get get excited about yeah, that we were talking about attention introverts extroverts yeah yeah so yeah. here's here's a a very important question for the audience yeah. people that are watching yeah. this uh, a lot of people are going to be watching this from my experience ted yeah working with people having hundreds of staff i got 120 in this marketing company i got 150 on the supplement company yeah. got a lot of people that i deal with I'm gonna say that if I had to guess the percentage of people that are extroverts that I like, they like attention and talk yeah. to the world. They really like to communicate and get on cameras and just be there present, presenting themselves yeah. and their bodies. Yeah. Might be like somewhere around 5% or probably, less. Probably, yeah, probably. So what would you say to the most, like there's people that are watching this video right now. Yeah. Listen to this podcast. Yeah. They have this message and they really wanna change with their products and services, with their information, with their value that they know they have, yeah. that changes the life of somebody else, but they don't feel this confidence in themselves yeah. of turning on that camera, pressing record and talking to the world or getting on stages. What would you say to these people, which is the most of them yeah. actually, how do they get started on that journey? How do they get through the analysis paralysis yeah. that ends up producing nothing and then they paralyze and end up conforming themselves yeah, to whatever it's a great, great question so like uh, two or three things right so i think the first thing is uh like what are they an expert in right and there's so many people like there's people who work with companies and are experts in technology like we work with a lot of business experts They're, they teach something in technology or sales or marketing or um you know or real estate or finance right so like what are they an expert in right first thing Second thing is like, what are three things they want to talk about on that topic, right? So let's say they're an expert in finance of like how, how to, uh, you know, how to invest uh, intelligently in the stock market, okay? What are three things in that area that you want to talk about? Write them down, right? Sit there with somebody like you or me or their spouse who literally just asks them a question. Mm. So if the, if the first thing is how to get a 10% return, I'm just making this up. Great, Joe, how do you get a 10% return? And he naturally knows how to answer that question. I like love that, that. Right? And so he gets comfortable just talking to one person. And he'll talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, right? Wow. Second question, same thing. Talk and talk and talk and talk. So if you want to give a stage talk, right? A stage talk is actually, if you're communicating to 1,000 people or 500 people or whatever, you're literally communicating to the audience, right? So you have to be in conversation with the audience. And when I speak to an audience, I literally walk down into the audience, I talk to the people, I ask questions, I engage like I'm having a conversation, right? I think that's the best type of speaking. So if you think of speaking as a communication and not really I'm presenting, but it's a communication, then you could practice at home with somebody to literally ask you those three questions. You'd be so natural and so normal that when you got up on stage, you just think about, okay, what's question one that I got asked? And you just talk. Wow, that's great. I've never um, thought about communicating the way that you communicated it. Yeah. Like when I have people asking me, how do I get started? I just say, like, just hit record and just go. Yeah, right? Talk yeah, to the camera. Yeah. But this is a great, Bro, great, it's great. Such, such a good tip. Guys, this yeah. is genius right here. Yeah. Because what you do is, this is a great gradient for the ones that are like, like people like me, people like Ted, right? We don't have to worry about it. We yeah. just press record and off and we go. go. We have cameras around and it's always like, hey, why are you not recording me? Exactly. On the contrary, right? Exactly. But people that are, they, they want to get started someplace. They want to get going, but they don't know exactly how to get going. I want to repeat exactly what Ted just said right now, because this could be very powerful and game changing to any of you. You're going to have somebody else that's important to you. Maybe that you feel full trust in yep. that it's not going to make you feel awkward. Exactly. A husband, a wife, a brother, yeah. a sister, a son, whatever. You're going to use one of these incredible devices that we have in front. You can have that person hit record. Try to not even look at the camera, have that person in front of you, ask you three questions about your subject that you're an expert in. And here's the thing, if you're watching this video, if you're on this podcast, if you're on this YouTube channel, whatever that may be, you have a brand or a business, or you're trying to build a brand for a particular product or service that you're passionate about. Yeah. So you have information yeah. that can change yeah. the lives of somebody else. Yeah. If you didn't, you really wouldn't have a business, right? That's just the way it is. True. So that information is your superpower yeah. and you take it for granted. And that's something that I've noticed, Ted, people take for granted the value that they have, totally. their information. Completely. Because they talk about it all the time. All the time. So how do you crack through that? You turn on, you have your brother or sister or a mom or whatever, click on that uh, record button. Yep. And you have that person in front of you, ask you three questions that you know you will be able to answer. 
camera on or camera off and you do it all the time and then you start seeing yourself and you get comfortable and you get comfortable and it's like it's a, it's the perfect gradient right like grade one then grade two right and then if you're going to go speak on a stage what do you do same thing have that person sit in the front row and ask you the question and drill you right then you get comfortable talking to the front row have them go a couple rows back and then have them ask the question from afar then finally have them go all the way to the back of the room and ask you the question from afar. So now what you get used to is putting your anchor points out and you get used to communicating at a longer distance, right? Like right now we're communicating to each other. If this was a room, you'd be like, so, right? You'd be communicating with more intention and you'd have more loudness to it. So that's all you do. And if you do that over and over and over again, somebody's gonna get comfortable. And you you know this better than anybody. Like if you're gonna go talk to an audience, right? You There is an audience there. And most speakers are just in their head. So they're telling the story, they're pacing on stage, and they're literally just talking to themselves, right? Which the best thing you can do at the beginning of talk, if you're gonna stage talk, you go, you get in communication with the audience. Hey, how many of you wanna hear about this today? It's not a technique, people think that's a technique. It's literally getting communication. How many of you would like to hear about booking stages today? Come on, how many of you would like to hear this? Okay, me here, right? How many of you like this? And I even start seminars, like what did you come here to learn this weekend? And then the audience starts telling you all these things. And right there, you're in communication. I want, I want, to, I want to mention something that you just said right yeah. now. Notice what Ted just said right now. What did you come here to learn today? Yeah. What would be a different way to go about, which is incorrect? What did you guys come here to learn today? Right. So right. instead of addressing that one that's person. Right. That's right. You would have, like, you would be surprised of the impact that that creates. Yeah, that's right. Eliminating the word guys yep. that just talks to the masses and specifically talking to you, the other person listening to me on that end of that communication line. That could happen also on the internet, right? Social media, on a video. Yeah. If you talk to that one person, people feel a little bit more connected to you, right? Exactly, that's exactly right. And it's like, and it's like when you perform or you stage talk, like practice in front of one person is like, if you're talking to nobody on a stage, there could be a thousand people in the room and you're talking to nobody. It doesn't go anywhere, right? So like even when I'm doing my one man play and I'm performing and I'm playing different characters, right? I have my director there. The hardest thing is to look into my director and actually give the message. Like I can do it to a bunch of blank chairs, but now I'm having an intimate conversation, having a communication with that one person. You gotta get really comfortable doing that. You start doing that, then you can start doing it to bigger and bigger and bigger audiences, you know? 100%. So I really think it's literally just a communication. I used to think totally backwards about it years ago, but I literally think it's just a communication with your audience and that's you get comfortable. And what makes you unique is your storytelling. And when you start telling stories, the comfort level of you and the audience go up so much faster because there's a difference between presenting and storytelling. They're two totally different things. Presenting is talk, 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 talk. Let me teach, teach, teach. Storytelling is like you put them in the moment experiencing the thing. Wow. You know? This is power. Yeah. Also, another thing that uh, to talk about this particular subject, and I think we're giving a lot of value to people. Yeah. This is exactly what I visualize that we could do for these 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 people that love they, they want to get started. Self-awareness is an important part of this, yeah. right? Because let's say that you are... Ted McGrath or you're Manuel Suarez and you're comfortable on a stage. Yeah. Well, you can go from zero to a thousand people on a stage, yeah. but if you don't feel that comfort, then this is what you do. You go on a, on a gradient, you do the next thing, right? Exactly like that. So you have to be aware of what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Whoever says, you know what? I want to be a speaker. Oh, I built success. They're inviting me to talk on their stage. Let me do it. That was actually pretty much how I started, by the yeah. way. Right. I had a student, uh, I had a, a teacher, name is Ben Cummins. He was my Amazon educator on many years ago when I was learning about Amazon. Yeah. I created a lot of success, built an amazing brand, and I kept on communicating to him. This is before I even visualized that I could be a speaker. Mm -hmm. And um, and one day he said, hey, would you mind talking to my audience? And I said, absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Terrified. Right. You said something about getting scared and terrified on stages, right? Yeah. Still today, I get scared, Ted. Yeah. I don't think that ever really goes away. Maybe yeah. when you get to a level of like massive size, maybe it goes away. I have an experience, like for yeah. me, it's still it's still an issue, right? Yeah. So anyways, I got I got on that stage. I was shaking like nonstop. I was um, really just like hardcore, like what the heck is going I on here? Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah. I wanna get off the stage. Yeah. But I just got through it and I just did it. Yeah. So I went from never speaking to a camera before in my life to speaking to hundreds of people in front of me. Yeah. They were paying a lot of money to be in that yeah. conference. Yeah. And it was terrifying, 
but it really was game changing for me. And it started my public speaking career. I was able to push through my doubts and insecurities and my fears to get that done. Yeah, yeah. If somebody's not able to do that or they don't feel that comfort or maybe they're not being invited to stages yet, then they just start with this whole thing that you talked about. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think most people get some type of energy or fear or whatever when they get up on a stage. I think it's totally natural. And I think the the main reason I think it happens is just a personal opinion of doing it is I'm about to get up. I have to give energy to a thousand people, right? And if I'm containing that energy, right, of like, okay, I got, of course it's going to have some reaction on my body, you know? When I was doing, when I was in Edinburgh doing my play, I did 13 shows in the course or 14 shows in like 19 days, right? And so I would get up on, before I was get up on stage, there's some nights where I would just have like complete dry mouth, right? And, and one, one of the things I learned is bananas before, there's, if bananas are not ripe and you're eating bananas before you get on stage, it actually creates a dry mouth. So that was one of the things that I learned, <laughs> that there's physical food things that do that. But even despite the bananas, there's other times where I get up and I'll have a physical thing where my mouth will get dry. Wow. And it's just whatever. And so my personal experience of it is, okay, I got to get out, confront the audience and, and just go. And then the moment I do that, then all the nerves go away within the first few minutes. And sometimes they go away the moment my feet hit the ground. Another experience I've had on it, I would do a seminar all day long, speak for eight, nine hours, and then have to go do a play at night to that same audience. And by the second night, doing the second play on the second night, I remember walking out and my body was just so exhausted. I, I was like, I can't confront going to do this. I was gagging in the back. Wow. But I knew once I got out in front of the audience because of what it demands, the audience is present and what it requires of my intention and my energy that I'd be fine. So I sat on that chair and the moment I sat on that chair, it all stopped and I was ready to deliver. So I think there's a, just an element of faith and confidence where you just got to go, hey, I'm going to have a lot of energy coming through me because I have to deliver that. So I'm already preparing that and bringing that. And when I get out there, I got to let it rip. And the more the restriction is there, the more that uncomfortableness comes. So if you can let it out in the first minute and just get in communication like, hey, you know, and get in communication with the audience, it goes away like that. Right. Because then your attention's out and it's not in. Yeah, and that has happened to me quite a bit also. You yeah. get started and it's a little awkward for a little totally. bit. And then once you get the flow, yeah. off you go. I don't and, know what speaker hasn't felt that, right? right? Probably most of the time when they go do that. Right, so that's why you can probably notice like the first few minutes are a little awkward yeah. and weird, yeah. and then you see the person come into their totally. whole being. Totally, right? yeah. That's great. Yeah. So Ted, um, what is your, uh, how do you, would you recommend to somebody to the, in this particular environment, it seems like 2023, yeah. we're going back to, again, conferences. It's coming back to like, more like normal, past the COVID environment. Yeah. What, do you, what are your thoughts on, if somebody wants to go and get their messages, the message to millions, yeah. do you say they go and try to find stages? Do you say they go on social media and get, get started there? Yeah. What is your approach? I have my opinion on it, yeah. but I want to hear from you that this is your, one of your expertise. Yeah, I think, I think there's two things. I'm like, okay, so somebody wants to be a speaker, right? You still need like, okay, I'm going to go speak and what's my strategy? So what do I want to do, right? And so I think a lot of times people think like, I'm going to go on a podcast or I'm going to do a webinar or I'm going to go on social media and they think that's a strategy. I'm like, but if you're going to be a speaker in business, you have a strat have to have a strategy to go from here all the way bringing people through to get a client, right? So for me, you have speaking and then marketing is the dream machine. So if I have a dream of being a speaker, that's my dream. That's my passion. That's what I want to do. You still need marketing as the dream machine to get you known with what it is that you're doing. So I think there should be a combination of both, right? If I want to lead live events, I think the smart thing about doing live events is like, great, if I want to be an expert in this space and I want to go speak to audiences, I should have an online marketing strategy, right? That grabs attention of an audience, brings them through some type of marketing funnel, and then eventually brings them to that path of getting them to the live event, right? But I don't think you should just sell the live events as the only strategy. Like you might sell a group coaching program or a group consulting program. You might sell an online course. Sell some way to monetize that group where they can do it from the comfort of their own home and then bring them as like uh, the cherry on top. Hey, this live event comes with it, you know? Um, so I think you just have to have an intelligent marketing strategy um, first. And then the speaking piece is like the cherry on top of integrating those two. But I think if you try and do, I'm just going to go be a speaker. Like in the beginning of my career, I was traveling around speaking on stages all the time. I was like, this is no life. I don't want to do this. I want to have a marketing machine that brings in consistent income. And then I want to choose the stages that I go speak right. on. So today as a speaker, you're both speaking online and offline. 
which is a relatively new thing in today's economy, right? Like if you're a speaker today, if you speak on video, you're a speaker. If you speak on podcast, you're a speaker. Like if you're online today, you're actually a speaker. So, okay, how do I maximize it both online and offline if that's what I want to do, offline being stages, and deciding what kind of speaker I want to be. Some people just want to be online, which is cool, right? Some people want to be in stages. So decide the strategy and then decide what you want to be and then put the strategy behind it. Right. Yeah. That's great, great stuff. So, Ted, I always... Uh because I talk about this subject a bit. Yeah. Uh, how do you get started in this particular journey of being a speaker or creating an impact? Yeah. I always say to people that because people come to me because I want to know how to build their brand. Yeah. I built a lot of success with my natural slim brand with Dr. Berg, with all these people that I get to work with every yeah. day. And they want to replicate that success at their own level. I mean, it's pretty crazy stuff that happens. I mean, this building over here manages right now $250 million in revenue built with the strategy of getting a person to become popular, being a speaker, getting attention for their brand. So yep. I would say the fastest way for somebody to build a brand in this environment, no matter what brand that is, yeah. it could be supplements, it could be business, it could be consulting, it could yeah. be like, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. The fastest way to connect with people and to get them to buy your stuff and connect with your brand, your products and services is to be a speaker. Yeah. That's the way it is. Yeah. But I also say to them, so that's the point, right? Like, okay, well, you can build a faceless brand, I believe that it's just a longer path. It yeah. really is a longer path because you're trying to come up with content strategies. You're competing with everybody else. People are connecting with other humans better than they're connecting with brands. Right. People trust more other human beings and other faces. So there's all these challenges. So I always say, if you can put yourself in front of the camera, if you can muster up some courage yeah. and just start talking to the world and make it consistent and don't quit because you're not getting enough likes and follows and engagement yeah. and whatever, you're gonna eventually win. So I tell them that, okay, just gotta get going and gotta get pushing. Yeah. I also say that um, you gotta start in the social media omnipresent world. Yeah. You gotta be as many places as possible. Yeah. And you gotta just execute and use platforms that people in our background and our past did not have access to. Yeah. Like my grandfather did not have the ability to press a button and go live to the world. Totally. We have, we have that opportunity. Yeah. So we take it for granted consistently and we don't leverage it enough. And time keeps on passing and not enough people are jumping on that opportunity. True. Yeah. So you talk about uh, having your own event, but here's the reality. That stuff costs money. Yeah. Most people yeah. that are starting don't have money to invest. Why not go in the social media world and use that as your launching pad to get attention. Totally. Last thing I'll say, and, and I want to hear your thoughts. It's the faster way to do it too. It's the faster way to yeah, do it, right? Yeah. So before I, I give it back to you so you can give me your thoughts on this, last thing I'll say is that my journey as a speaker began with first getting results for something. Yeah. Because otherwise, what are you doing mm -hmm. in the social media world or on stages? Talking about what? Yeah. Like if you haven't accomplished anything for yourself. Exactly. So for me, a starting point is you want to get some evidence that what you're talking about actually works and it's real because otherwise your stories are not real. Yeah. People don't have any evidence that they should be paying attention to what you have to say. That's right. So I always say, Hey, listen, you know, it's like, for example, your girl you're talking about humanitarian efforts. I yeah. want to listen Yeah. because she's done it. Exactly. She has done something that nobody else has. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I want to pay attention because right. I want to make the world a better place. And she's done it. But imagine Mary Solo talking on stages about uh, human trafficking and um, and then saving the lives of little kids and little girls. But she hasn't done any of it. Right. It's not the same impact. Exactly. Not even close, exactly. right? Yeah. So in the same area of building a business, right, of like whether that's consulting or real estate or products, physical products or digital products, et cetera, why would you not first focus on yourself before you start going to the world with a message? What are your Absolutely. thoughts on this? A hundred percent. I think, I think most people who do this well, like they have a couple decades under their belt. Right. But I think that's a big group of people. Right. So like if somebody's going to get on and be an expert and talk about real estate, there's a lot of people out there in the real estate field that have been doing it successfully for years, maybe making hundreds of thousands of dollars, making, making, making millions of dollars. Right. There's a, an audience of theirs that's making zero. Right. So how great would they be to teach somebody how to make a career of, you know, six figures in income, right? There's a whole bunch of people that want to make six figures in income, right? Not us, but a whole bunch of people that do, right? Right. So that's an expertise that somebody could teach, right? So you think you have to decide, or do you want to be a speaker? Do you want to be an expert? As an expert, you are teaching people online still today. As a speaker, you're more like front. I want to be in front of audiences. I like that. It's a, it's a little bit of a more advanced skill set. I think as an expert, it's you can pull it back a little bit and go, 
if I'm an expert in technology, I could go teach people about that. If I'm an expert in real estate, I could teach people about that, right? But I have to have like a decade to two decades of experience under my belt to be able to really go teach something mm. like that. You know? What's the difference between a speaker and an expert though? I think like, an expert- I thought it was the same thing. Well, I think an expert has knowledge that they wanna share with the world. So for example, we have a lot of people that come into our programs and we teach them how to package up their knowledge into group coaching programs, right? And so they're gonna do a group coaching program and they might facilitate group coaching to 10 or 12 people. And, uh, and then they might, they might have it as a hybrid with like a little bit of one-on-one -on -one consulting and they want to just do some co consulting in a group or one-on-one -on -one and make a living doing that. Right. Mm. Then we have, because uh, they have value to give because they, they have it, tons of value. To they give. have a lot of value that they haven't really communicated. They haven't spread it. They want to just put that out there into the internet and just impact people. Tons of value. Yeah. So we'll teach them how to like, how do you great? So how do you set up a marketing funnel? How do you do your advertising? How do you bring that person through to a phone call to then sell a 5,000, 10,000, $50,000 consulting Because information is power. And so totally. we, we don't realize that the most valuable thing that you could ever have is what's in your head that you can share it with people and people need that information to improve their lives. Completely. Like people sit down with me and I give them marketing direction and then they turn around and build a hundred million dollar brands exactly with the information that i gave them 100 so it's valuable so at, at any particular level that there's information that can help people so you help them structure it right and so especially offer it exactly right? and especially today where people trust trust less and less larger institutions they want to learn from people that they trust which is why your message your storytelling which builds trust and then what are the seven things you want to teach on right you can create any program seven things you want to teach on great and then you package it right so if I want to teach on this, 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 and this, it's seven points maybe in real estate or seven points in technology or seven points in sales or seven points in marketing. Then you go, okay, now I have the seven things that I'm going to teach. I can package that in anything. Like it could be a group coaching program. It could be an online course where I'm not showing up to deliver it. It could be a four day seminar. It could be any of those things, right? So then you got to decide how you want to actually deliver that, right? An expert might go, eh, that stage thing of doing a seminar, not for me. But a small, intimate, 10 to 12 person group coaching thing, maybe uh, a, a year long thing where we get together for a year every 120 days and people come, but I just facilitate conversations, right? Mm. It's more of like an expert. But then if you do the test, and I do this in all my seminars, great. So how many of you want to speak from the stage? 20, 30% of the hands come up. How many of you knew you were supremely confident from the stage you would actually want to speak? 60% of hands would go up. How many of you knew you had a system to actually make money with and were confident would want to speak from the stage? 98% of the hands go up. So probably 98% of every expert would love to be on a stage. It's just confidence, right? So you start the confidence. Yeah, it's confidence. That's the first thing you got to crack. It's confidence, dude. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. So anybody that tells you, yeah, I don't feel comfortable in front of a camera. It's, they're just basically saying, I don't have confidence. Right. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. And I got to crack that. And totally. that's crackable. That's something that you figured out a system to get a person to the point that they're like, okay, I can do this. 100%. Which is, by the way, like going back to what you said earlier, just that simple tip right there of having that camera turned on and having somebody ask you questions and you're talking to the camera. You're not even talking to the camera, you're talking to that person. That's great. Totally. But I think some of some of the uh, high production, you've been in the entertainment industry for a while. Some of well, the eight years, eight years, yeah. the yeah. Uh, some of these high production um, organizations, when they do interviews, they actually make the person intentionally not looking at the camera. Yeah, so right, they, right. they have an yeah. interviewer, yeah. right? Yeah. And they'll be looking at the interviewer and they yeah. say, look at me, don't look at the camera. Right. I think that's part of what they're trying to do. They're trying to like, because they understand that the confidence is not there in 98% of the people yeah. or whatever, yeah. right? So they, they want to make it comfortable because we're having a conversation, we're talking. So that's a great drill to start building your confidence. Completely, right? completely. Because and, you have the knowledge. The and there's knowledge so, there. Exactly, and there's so many people that actually wanna do that. Like, I, I mean, I got a call with a guy in a couple hours. I mean, he's got a really successful business on security. I mean, you wouldn't think that somebody in security might would wanna go online and do these things, but they actually do. And just think about what they could do for their services, right? If they want to market their services, well, they need to be a brand. They need to actually be communicated on video today. If you're not, like, well, where are you, right? And also that, that person I said the, uh, the other day, I said, hey, have you ever thought about teaching other security experts how to do what you do? Yeah, somebody asked me about that the other day. So there's so many people like this movement spreading so fast. That there's so many people if they were just approached with the question about like, would you teach your expertise to somebody else? So many people would do it. Because right. it's also help, dude, it's fun. Like when you're actually helping somebody else, it's fun. Now Absolutely. there's a, a fine line between people with skill sets and experts. And then you got oh, every Tom, Dick and Harry who's like, I'm a life coach. You know what I'm saying? Those, you gotta, those people you gotta stay away from, right? But the people with real expertise, right? That's a tangible expertise of like marketing, 
technology, real estate. Actual valuable expertise yeah. that are going to help somebody increase their own value for their families, for themselves. Yeah. Now here, here's the thing. You talked about how building a coaching group or building a, you know, all these like uh, digital programs that you can sell, communities, et cetera, to make money. I would add something to that. Yeah. A lot of people are here that are listening to this. They have brands, they right. have physical products, they have supplement brands, they have like information that would help them get attention. And when they get attention, they can sell more of that. Yeah. What are your thoughts on, because that's that's been our strategy. Yeah. My focus has not been to sell coaching. My focus, for example, in this marketing building, that we have a lot of clients, a lot of growth, Inc. 5000 expansion, like one of the fastest growing companies in marketing in, in our country, has been for me to become a speaker, get on stages, do webinars, do social media, go heavy on all that stuff to get attention for our services, not totally. for my coaching program, yeah, none yeah, of that stuff. Yeah. I couldn't care less about any of that stuff yeah. because this is where our bread and butter. I do have some small little programs that I do and I have digital products that I yeah. sell. I sold millions of dollars of courses, but the real organization that I'm paying attention to right now is our marketing company. So yeah. anybody that has services, yeah. right? If you look at Natural Slim next door, $60 million this year, we're built on a person becoming a speaker, yeah. communicating, bringing attention towards our brand and people buying our products and services. Sure. So on, on that particular area, Think about the people that are listening to this, that they have brands and they wanna get attention. Yeah. And they don't wanna just depend on advertising because if you don't put yourself in front of the camera, you have to pay to play. Yeah. You cannot leverage the organic opportunity. Yeah. You cannot leverage the stages. Yeah. You have to invest a dollar in advertising and hope that you get $2 back. Yeah. Yeah. But when you do the content and you get the speaker role as part of your organization, then what are your thoughts on physical products, services, becoming a speaker to sell those things. I think it's brilliant. I think that's like, everybody should be doing that, right? Because it's like, I mean, what do people want before they even consume a product? Education, right? So when you think about speakers who are educating and teaching things, right? Uh, Cause they're an expert in it. Whoever's selling that stuff has some expertise. And even when you're marketing that stuff, you're doing content marketing, which is educating and teaching people, right? So the two go hand in hand. It's like some people want to take that content further and teach it into a course to where they can empower somebody and go, hey, here's how to do X, Y, Z, take these steps to change your life. But even somebody with a health brand or whatever, people want a lifestyle on that. So the so if they're taking supplements, it's a, people who take supplements, it's like a lifestyle, right? That's my personal viewpoint. Like health is a lifestyle for me. I'm always looking for the next best way to do something, get healthier and stay healthy, right? So I think sharing content and educating your marketplace on that, they can't wait to hear that stuff. And the more they get educated, the more they get empowered, the more they're gonna buy those products and services. Yeah, because they become the possibility, the probability of success using their products and services dramatically Completely. goes Completely. Because they're educated. Right, because they actually know something about us. Like, wait, people don't just wanna go into a doctor today. They wanna be educated on what's going on in the healthcare system so they can be empowered. So same thing with any products that's being sold before somebody buys it. In fact, the the sales process should be an educational process. Right. So if you can do it through marketing and just educate them and enlighten them in advance, why not do it? Every brand should do it. Totally. You know, it would, it would be that much better. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, Ted, we can keep on talking for ages. You have a lot of value to give. I have a lot of questions to ask you. We know that we already have you booked to come and speak here on our stage here mm -hmm. in the AGM Marketing Headquarters, and that's happening in March, March 14th. Yeah. Uh, we just talked about a date right now. Anybody that's watching this, anybody that's listening to this, you can go to moneymakingworkshops.com. He's gonna bring it. We're not gonna charge you for it. He's gonna take this subject to the next level. And we're gonna we're gonna really give you guys the ability to be able to impact the lives of people with your message and get started on that journey. All right, I love it. So I'm excited about our collaborations. Yeah. We've got some things on the pipeline. Uh, what? How can people connect with you, Ted, if they wanted to keep on learning about this particular? I skill? think you can go to tedmcgrathbrands.com. Just go to the website. We just launched it, a new one. You can check it out. There's some free stuff there, right? And at tedmcgrathofficial.com on Instagram, if you want to go there. At tedmcgrathofficial.com. But that's the Instagram is just at Ted McGrath. Official. At Ted McGrath, yeah. 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 So yeah. check him out. Uh, this dude is for real. Uh, he's going to bring the value. We're going to keep on finding ways to bring him to you and keep on giving you the value as best as possible. All right. Ted, anything else that you would like to say to the audience? Thanks for having me, bud. Appreciate it. It's great to yeah. have you here. Yeah. See you guys in the next one.